Each week at It's Happening Out, we ask our host about what is important to them, but there is a twist. And that twist is that it must be in just 30 seconds or you hear this bell. See how easy that is to ring? That was weird. <laughs> we call this segment What's On Your Mind, and it's sponsored by Jets Pizza. Jets is the LGBTQ plus pizza of choice. Okay. What's on our mind is the deep dish Detroit style pizza, or perhaps the <laughs> cauliflower thin crust. Jets Pizza has been with It's Happening Out for four years, and their Bigger is Better campaign captured our attention. And, of course, they're talking about their slices. What did you think we were talking about? Jet supports a huge variety of LGBT events and nonprofits with more than 400 locations. I'm going to slow down a little. 400 locations nationwide, and they are considered, frankly, one of the best franchise opportunities in America. And this is why Jets Pizza is our sponsor for What's On My Mind. All right, so let's begin. Cameron Glass, what's on your mind? What's on my mind is the word fat. Ooh. All the time I hear people say, Oh, you're not fat. You're beautiful. I never said I wasn't beautiful. I just said, I have fat on my body, baby. This belly is here for a reason. So when I say the word, I'm fat, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm ugly. I'm disgusting. People don't like me because I'm this big. No, fat is a descriptive word. And I want to break that stigma that everybody has fat equals ugly. So I want to talk about the word fat. Oh, interesting. All oh, right. So you just did? Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to talk <laughs> no, oh my God, no, 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 but I was like, Okay, all right. So then we're going to talk about... I got 30 seconds. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I got it. I'll, it. P-H-A-T. Yeah. I'll never call you fat again. All right. <laughs> and Mark Pettit, what's on your mind? <laughs> <laughs> the fat well, now it's fat. Yeah. It's on my mind. <laughs> But no, seriously, coming off the Fourth of July, I think appreciation is is really on my mind. That it can be hard to celebrate your country when so much of the country seems to be against you at this point in time. And being from a military family, I think it's sad when you see freedoms that have been fought for with blood and service being pulled back. Um, but in terms of appreciation, just kind of taking a little bit of a step back, realizing that we are moving in the right direction. And historically, this is the best time in the world to be alive. The best medicine, the best mortality rates, the best communication, the best access to information. So just don't let it all get you down too much and have a little appreciation. Yeah. I love that. So Lovely. Right. Yeah. And Faye, what? Ugh. What is on your mind? Boobies are on my mind. <laughs> boobies, baby. Big and small boobies, tatas, melons. Thelma and Louise, whatever you want to call them, right? We all love boobies. That's what I am talking about today. Even gay men love boobies. Is it because they're soft, because they're supple, because you can lay on them, because they, you know, they're just fun? You know, they're fun bags also, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. And it's okay for you gay boys to love boobies, but don't touch my boobies, okay? We were at the 4th of July celebration yesterday, right? Um, right? We were at the yeah, boat. Yeah. And I might have been wearing a dress that only covered sort of part of my boobies. And every single gay boy was like, oh, boobies. Oh, boobies. Oh, I love them. Can I put my what? face on them? Oh, yes. Oh, I was I like, who this? does that? Who does that? I don't that, know. You gay man. boys believe that I belong I to you. And I kind of do. I get it. But these are mine. I, my wife paid for these. That's what's on my mind. <laughs> paid for them after cancer. <laughs> Right? Yeah, yes, yeah. That's right. She fought All for right. him twice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and John Casanias, what's on your mind? <laughs> right. I'm not, wow. I heard something else, but I'm going to keep moving. Uh, appreciation as well is on my mind. To be honest, I, you know, as you guys know, I went to New York. I had a, a gig. We were at the Eagle for Megawolf. And kind of, you know, when you do sound check and you think everything's going well and it all collapses. Aww. And the microphone didn't work. My performance was pretty shit. But. I appreciate everyone who faked it and kept telling me how amazing I was <laughs> because I know I wasn't great. But I, honestly, like you say, you have fans. Like I legit have fans that appreciate me and pump me up and send me messages and pictures of how great it was when I know that it wasn't. So thank you. Friends that you know, to you. you yeah. Know uh, shout out to But friends. you know what's funny about that? Thank God for those friends. I'm in Colombia, and all I saw was all of these great posts about your performance in Aww. New York. Uh -uh. So you said this, absolutely <laughs> true. I had no idea that you had any problems in your performance because every single thing that I saw in you was 
gosh, this is great. Watch this. This is great. Mm, well, all great. the people who said that also want to fuck you. So yeah. there's that. Yeah. <laughs> like, did you, did you have your shirt so let's on? Be for real. This terrible let's be real okay. about it. I did not have my shirt on. Of course he didn't. Okay. Have shirt on. Okay. Well, uh, just all right. Something went gonna... bad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and elimination. What's on your mind? Well, you know, missed opportunities. You know, so I met Al uh, maybe about four years ago, and he got me confused. He didn't call me Albie Shore. He didn't call me Christopher Williams. He called me Bobby Brown. <laughs> oh. So, so none of that. And so, and so I'm leading into, you know, um, three, a year, a, a year later, a um, you know, I'm on, I'm, I was invited to do a, um, internet show with, um, three drag queens, Daisy Dead Pedals, um, and Nicole Hallowell. And, and so Al then sees me there having a conversation. Again, he thought Bobby Brown couldn't speak because all he knows is Bobby. <laughs> and so, here we, here we are, <laughs> here we are three years later, and I am celebrating my It's Happening Out anniversary, where I've been doing, I've been a part of this Happening fa Out family in various ways in three, in a, a total of three years. And so, although he confused me, all black folks don't look alike. He couldn't even find someone close to my pew, um, you know, to confuse me with. So I'm just happy to say that, you know, thanks to production, thanks to the crazy white guy to say, you know, Production had to keep reminding them who I was yeah, um, to be invited back and to be at this table and be in this committee and be with this group for three years. So I'm, I'm, that's what's on my mind. Lovely. I won't even ring the bell. That was a lovely statement. <laughs> I normally don't do a what's on your mind, but I'm going to do one. Because I spoke about him. You that's why. Yeah, yeah I did. Right, right. Because you're still Bobby. <laughs> on Sunday while I was in Medellin, I got, um, uh, I got robbed and what? physically attacked. And I haven't uh, haven't uh, talked about it uh, much, but I, I do I do want to say one thing about it. Um, it was orchestrated. Um, somebody came in from the left. Uh, I was on a street, and, and the street was crowded. And somebody came in from the left and punched me in the jaw. What on this side? And somebody came in from the right simultaneously, and then gave me a second punch in the jaw. And the person that did the first punch then starts to go down. And I wasn't paying attention to it. Got patted down. Had my wallet stolen. My phone stolen. Nothing uh, mm. left. And um, it was quite a moment. Um, having traveled to 147 countries, it's never happened before. I know security. I know. Uh, I know theft risk. It can happen on in the street in Atlanta. It can happen in Wilton Manors. It can happen anywhere. So it's not the fact that I was in any particular place. But it is a shocking moment when it does finally really happen to you and there's physical involvement. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me in, in that one of the things of learning about the chicken or the egg, people assisted me right away and I was concerned about my phone in terms of the password being broken because things in my phone were just you know, in incredibly sensitive. And uh, my wallet being stolen, and and the you're in a foreign country, financial effects. And it wasn't that like credit cards wouldn't stand behind me because they would, but the hassle of going through mm -hmm. what potentially was getting ready to happen was dire. So within an hour, I was able to correct all of the stuff that was in my wallet and have my phone suspended uh, for 30 days. Uh, Verizon, uh, in terms of doing that. Now I've been back for one day. Um, uh, one full day now. And uh, interesting things happen when something like this happens. Um, how do you uh, get a phone if you uh, can't pay by credit card where you can only buy a new phone by a credit card because you can't pay cash because it's attached to your account and it has to be a credit card. And your credit card won't issue uh, renewals of credit cards unless you have your phone. And so you're caught in a catch-22. Uh, my principal card did uh, send uh, a new card, which arrived today, and they sent it to the wrong address. And because they sent it to the wrong address, it sets up a fraud warning automatically. And now I must prove <laughs> that it is me that didn't get the card in the first place when I have no identification to prove who I am. You don't have your passport? I have my passport, but that takes 48 hours for them to approve by sending it in this certain courier way. Um, blah, blah, blah. So I still have no um, identification. Uh, last night coming back from uh, the, um, uh, the cruise, I, I was at, um, uh, at Oakland Park and Federal, and I, I moved into a, a lane uh, too sharply and the red lights went on and the police stopped me on the way home. So it's like 
karma is trying to tell me something. And I explained to him, uh, wait, I have nothing. And <laughs> but you're white, so he let you go, right? Ooh, I'm glad I didn't say it, but yes, absolutely go on. And, and went through all of that process. And yes, he was okay. very kind and I, let me go. Of course. I'd have been uh, still in a corner. Right. Shit, I would have been in jail right now. All right. I, I'm still I in the corner. Been, like, yeah. pocket. That would have been me. Oh, you're oh. new. If you need money, Mark is also white. I'm sure he's... <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the long, uh, oh the long story of. Yeah, that was way uh, more than thirty seconds. No, for real. Yeah, look, look. <laughs> all that <laughs> ding. <laughs> he did it. He did it on purpose that we couldn't ding him. Like we would feel the heartstrings. Yeah, like that's right. Um, the the interesting thing that I'm going through over the last two days is something that I normally don't experience. I'm outside wow. my comfort zone, which is um, I'm fighting. Going, God, the world's a really terrible place. That's where I'm at right mm. now, and. It's interesting to me because then when we make the white people, privileged white people jokes, of course they apply. They do. And then when something like this happens, it helps you realize, oh, perspective. there's the perspective of the joke. There's the perspective. And you don't even have a bruise on you. How and the that, hell is that? <laughs> they must have soft punches or something. <laughs> Oh, the, the my Colombian call. brothers could punch. No, no, no. Oh, no. It, was, it was the work. It was the work. It bounced, oh, yeah, it it bounced, the work, out. It bounced out. It bounced. Uh, <laughs> yeah. wow. That's the most important point. Oh, wow. we're so glad yeah, you yeah, no, uh, yeah, no, but, but at the end of the day, wow. today, I'm fighting the, uh, uh, the humanity of the world sucks. And I realized, God, that's really a terrible perspective. Mm. Because so many people, even with what I've gone through in the last 48 hours, are in way worse situations. And I'm not celebrating that in any way. I'm just saying it provides perspective yeah. for me. <laughs> I have to, I need to get a new black card. <laughs> Please send me another black card. They told me today, no, unless you get a phone. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting another one. So, Al, please uh -huh. use that perspective uh -huh. yes. to, to make the world a better place. Yeah. Understand that course. a lot of people course. who have course. to do those boost, boost phones and things like that and, and get nervous when the red lights come on yeah. and don't have credit to get those kind of things. I hope I, I don't. I'm sad that you had to experience it, but I'm I'm happy in a way because I, I as we all have traveled over the over the weeks, you know, some of the jokes have been, is this Al? And I'm like, no, Al plays a character. But, you know, now you have the sensitivity to know that and then another joke was is al the whoopee they always I always describe us as the view on steroids and they're like oh, is al the whoopee i'm like no he ain't that nice so you know now <laughs> so now hopefully you'll be able to or you know smart, right? <laughs> well thank you for that but anyway interesting perspective of what's going on in my life and and maybe valuable for everyone else we are queer news tonight the world's first and only live daily lgbtq plus evening news show brought to you from happening out television network we operate in the same model of PBS and NPR, but for the LGBTQ plus community. We educate, inform, and entertain by supporting the 10 pillars of our LGBTQ plus community with more than 100,000 a week watching us on Roku, Apple Television, and other channels. To keep the story going, we accept donations with 100% transparency. Stay updated and live authentically with Queer News Tonight.